Oh, hey, what's going on? It's uh, Mike T. Nelson from ExtremeHumanPerformance.com. Got me reading the little strength and conditioning journal here. Um, but today's thought has to do with tissue turnover rates. Ooh, ooh, ooh boy, sounds exciting. Um, thought process I've had for a while, and I'm sure other people have had the same one, is that if we're trying to get better um, remodeling, for example, so let's say you're trying to increase strength, maybe trying to increase body composition performance. Um, your body is constantly turning over. So we know that all the cells in the body are constantly being replaced over time. Now the rate's gonna be a little bit different. Obviously on one end, bone's probably gonna take quite a while. Um, other things like some you know, small cellular structures turn over very fast. So we know that when you go to the gym and you exercise, you're actually physically breaking down some muscle tissue. And the body perceives that as eh, a little bit of a threat and it builds up the tissue uh, bigger and stronger than what it was before. So it says, hey, if you're gonna go out and do that again, I wanna be prepared. So the thought was that if you're trying to promote that remodeling, um, the thought is that maybe there's a way to increase your tissue turnover. I had talked to uh, Dr. Lani Lowry about this in the past. I've talked to Frankie Ferries about it and some other people too. Um, so a couple ways you may be able to do this. Again, this is a little bit theoretical, but it is based on some data. Um, is actually increasing the amount of protein that you're eating. So we know that as you increase the amount of protein you're eating, your body is always maintaining build up a protein and tear down a protein. So even if you don't exercise, we know that both those rates are changing. So protein is being built up, protein is also being degraded. In a perfect world, we want to have more protein that's built up and then less that's actually degraded. At least that's what would be commonly thought. So the thinking is maybe we should increase both of those. So we know that by eating a lot more protein, you know, again, we're not going crazy here, maybe, you know, over one gram, maybe even at one gram, one and a half grams per pound of body weight. So if you weigh about 200 pounds, you'd be looking at maybe 200 to 300 maybe, that that actually increases the amount of protein that's broken down. So what you're getting is an increased turnover. So you're actually tearing down more protein and you're actually building more. So you're turning over that tissue at a much faster rate. So we combine that with maybe some pretty high volume training for a period of time if you want to get fancy, maybe you emphasize the eccentric portion maybe a little bit more. So we know that eccentric uh, tends to cause more muscle damage and actual physical tearing of some of the fibers. So one of the things I tried the other day is did a trap bar deadlift, uh, just put 225 on it and kind of did like sort of uh, EDT meets German volume training. So my goal is to do 10 sets at 10 reps Still keeping good form, pretty good speed, and see how long that would take me. In my case, it took me like 22 minutes. First couple sets were pretty easy. Toward the end was uh, pretty brutal. So in my little example there, you know, I moved over about 20,000 pounds. So yeah, fair amount of volume. So the theory is that by doing more volume and maybe more eccentric, you can kind of tear down a little bit more tissue. You combine that with maybe an increase in your protein, and now you can increase that tissue turnover rate. So what you can do is replace that sort of older, bad muscle with newer and better tissue. So you're promoting your ability to adapt at a faster rate. Um, not a lot of data on this. There is data to show, looking at measuring uh, CK levels, uh, creatine kinase, that's a little guy that lives inside the muscle and you can measure that in the bloodstream. It's a very crude marker of uh, muscle breakdown. And so there is some data looking at that. The downside is that if you do this, you probably want to have a period of time where you keep your protein relatively high. So if you got your protein habitually up to maybe 300 grams a day, then you all of a sudden cut it off. Now your breakdown is still going to be really high and you probably aren't going to be building up as much, especially if you stop exercising. So that's the only caveat. 
if you do try that, you probably want to titrate your way up and then slowly titrate your way back down. Some evidence shows that coming back down, you maybe want to take, you know, 10 to maybe two weeks to, to work that process. So um, something you can play around with. If you guys do, let me know. Leave me a comment below. Takeaway today is looking at possibly tissue turnover rate in muscle. And two ways you can probably do that. Increasing the amount of protein that you take in on a daily basis. And then also probably pushing up your volume in your training. Uh, if you're going to push up volume in your training, probably going to need to sleep more, probably get more calories in too. Um, but I think you'd be surprised. You probably won't gain a lot of fat by doing that. Uh, John Berardi refers to that more as a G-flux method. So you're increasing uh, both of them. Should get better body compositions too. And that may be related to uh, possibly tissue turnover rate. So uh, drop me a comment below. Let me know what you think of that. And uh, that's it. It's Mike T. Nelson for ExtremeHumanPerformance.com. We'll get back to...